Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and we are currently following this Arabian mare the Arabian horse mare because she should be giving birth any minute now and oh my gosh the coyotes are like going off like a little siren I wonder what's up with them oh look at her look at her she's coming over into the the little grasses over here oh are we gonna have a little horse baby are we gonna have a little foal okay okay oh I love how she like hides in the grass oh <gasps> there's the baby there we go, you guys. Oh, look at the precious little baby. So we have a new Arabian horse foal having just been born into our big giant Arabian horse um, enclosure over here. And oh my gosh, there's so many complaints. Okay, zebra 16 is really thirsty. Is that because there's just so many of you? Or are you getting, okay, you're getting some water now, so you should be fine. Um, let's see, Alfonsi is unable to reach the termite mound, probably because there's a bazillion and a half of you. And then this guy wants to mate, but he can't find a mate. So let's go ahead and we'll release him to the wild, actually, so that he can go ahead and find a mate in the wild. But yes, welcome back. Welcome back to our beautiful Savannah Zoo. We're doing really well here, and we're currently working on the project of trying to keep our meerkat population down, but also getting our Nile crocodiles situated. And I have already snagged a few of them. There is one male and three female Nile crocodiles hiding out inside of these. Oh, and Sentry just gave birth hiding out inside of these crates. So we're gonna try to get the Nile Crocodile exhibit built today. And before we really get started, what we should definitely do is build the bridge first. Cause I tend to like have the most trouble with the building bridges and we want the bridge to span like this huge area right here. Also, I was thinking it would be kind of cool if we could come over and make like um, some little islands in the middle of the river because I think it'll be easier on the animals too. All right, we'll give them some, some of the deeper land like some of the, or deeper water, I mean. But I wanna give him a little bit of land to just be able to like climb up on in the middle here. Just because I wonder if that'll be easier for them. There we go. I wish I hadn't messed up the river. I don't know what I did to mess the river up, but I totally like messed my little river up, even though it looked so pretty and it was so smooth. And then I like lowered the river water level too much and now it's just padunky. Ah, oh, there we go. It's back to being what it should have been, except now I have to fix it again. Oh dear. Well, we'll fix this. Whoops, that is not tropical savanna. All right, come here. That's better. Tropical savanna grass. Isn't it so pretty? I love the color of it. All right, there we go. So a little tropical savanna grass. Gotta get this fixed up. Oh, we're gonna have to put down tropical savanna grass everywhere, actually, all along this area. So let's actually go ahead and just get that out now. There we go. We're gonna have some very happy Nile crocodiles, I think. I wonder what it's gonna take to make our crocodiles happy. That's gonna be interesting to find out. All right, up along the river edge over here. Oh, that's like, oh, that's a Pocahontas song. That's why I was like, that sounds so familiar. It's like up, up ahead the river bend or something like that around the river bend. There we go. All right, let's go ahead. But yeah, Nile crocodiles absolutely fascinated me when I was younger. Really, crocodiles in general did. Ah, um, oh, dang it. Okay, come back here, tropical savanna grass. There we go. Crocodiles in general fascinated me. Um, the large reptiles, sharks, the big predators. And um, it took me a long time before I realized, like, you know, sharks, crocodiles, kraken, which, you know, would be zoological, or not zoological, it would be like cryptobiology, um, which is like fake, made up mythological biology there. Because um, kraken doesn't actually exist. Giant squid do, but not kraken. Uh, but yeah, I, I it took me a long time to realize that I was really into those big predators as a kid. And now I am actually really into birds. So it's kind of funny how those things have shifted around. But if you think about it, birds and big predators have a lot in common. Because if you think back to the dinosaurs, and then if you look at like modern birds and what they're descended from on the evolutionary scale, would be dinos. At least a good chunk of them. All right, let's go ahead and get this. I really should have changed the color of the grass and changed what type of grass it is before I made that big giant like river, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna change it up here as carefully as possible so I don't mess up my pretty water that I really love. And here's where we're going to be putting our little restaurant. So it's gonna be nice. Oh, look at the color on the cliff. Oh, that's so nice. But yeah, just think about it, you guys. We're gonna have lions roaming over here. We're gonna have like the elephants roaming around. It is gonna be fantastic. I'm super excited about this. 
All right, there we go. I might have to fix the waterfall in a little bit, but that is totally doable. Oh my gosh, I really should have remembered. Here's here's your lesson from Siri for the day. When terraforming, make sure you just go ahead and replace the terrain before you start doing all the fancy water pieces, because it takes a while to fix that. All right, and we're gonna come down here really quickly. Just gonna go ahead, and have that grass change color. There we go, but yeah, I'm thinking hippos. I'm pretty sure there's hippos. I, I feel silly, but I've never added hippos um, into any of my zoos in all the years that I have made zoos. So I can't recall if there's actually hippos. I'm gonna feel really silly if I'm like, yeah, we have the giant hippo exhibit. Let's build it now and there's no hippos. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead now that that's taken care of. And we're going to build a couple bridges spanning the length of the river. So let's see, little pathways, and we need bridges, and we're going to use the Safari Elevated Path. We want a little ramp up first, so I'm going to use the ramp up from here. Yeah, ramp up from here, and that should be good. Yeah, that should be good. Then we're going to do ramp up from here, and ramp up from here. Come on, there we go. So there's the ramp up, and then you want to make it nice and flat all the way across. There we go. Good, good, good. Good, good. And maybe a little bit further just to have a little bit of land room that we could use for the animals. And then elevated path back down. Oh, I'm so glad there's enough space for all this. And then, and then we need like a big construction sign or something over here. Guests, please turn around. There's nothing to see here. All right, so there's one of the big paths um, that I wanted to make. I guess another bridge, we could just put bridges spanning pretty much the whole length of it. That would be pretty smart. Um, so actually, I'm okay with that idea. Let's go ahead and build another bridge, just kind of right over here. So, do, 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 come on. There we go, one, two, three. And, nope, okay, let's try again. One, two, three, one, two, three. And let's do the little flat part. Oh, I'm so excited. It'll be really fun. The crocodiles are so complex as, as creatures too. I used to think that they were just um, kind of like mindless eating machines, but they actually have really complicated courtships. The crocodile, some species of crocodilian will go totally above and beyond when it comes to taking care of their young too, which is very fascinating to me because a lot of people don't think reptiles take care of their babies and many don't. But then there's other species, um, like actually the reticulated python mom will make a little uh, like nest well, with her body, like she'll wrap around her eggs, like she has a nest for the eggs, but then she'll wrap around them with her body in a ring and protect the eggs from being eaten by any predators. And she'll go for like months without eating that way and just sit there and protect her eggs. So reticulated python snakes of all things will go out of their way to make sure that their young are okay in that manner. And let's go ahead and make the paths come up to each one of these. So snakes will protect their young like that. Um, who else? And let's go ahead and get some fencing so we can enclose. Here we go, this nice glass fencing. That's what we should use. Yeah, and then we need to have the fencing go under the bridge too. But not so close. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, I think that fencing's a little too tall. We need, we need that fencing, but a little bit shorter, like the too high. All right, we'll find it. But yeah, there's some species of crocodilians where the parents will go back and take care of the young um, after they hatch. They'll take them to a safe place. Oh, am I gonna have to raise the whole bridge up? For real? Really? I am, I made it too low. I didn't notice it was so low down here. Oh my gosh. Why? Increase, can I just, is there really no way just to like grab, okay. Okay, that's fine, this is fine. This is happening. This is why I knew I needed to be careful with building the bridges. Darn it. Okay, well, there we go. We'll, we'll get this fixed. All right. But yeah, there's species of crocodile. Um, where like, actually I was just watching a documentary about Egyptian 
or not Egyptian, excuse me, Indian crocodiles, a unique species of Indian crocodile where they will actually, to survive the really hot like drought period, dig holes, they'll dig tunnels where they will stay inside of the tunnel during the dry season so that they don't dry out and die. And often they won't have any water sources near them for like months. And so they'll just dig these tunnels out, claw these tunnels out and hide inside of these tunnels that will provide them shelter during all of the really dry uh, season when normally there's no water, there's just nothing because you have to wait for the rains and the monsoons to come back to be able to survive. But these crocodiles, you guys, these male, the males in those groups would actually go back for the young, not the females, and they would take care of the babies. They would gather them all up, they would try to hatch any of the eggs, and they'd pick them up with, I mean, imagine that. Imagine how huge a crocodile mouth is. That's pretty darn scary, you know what I mean? It's still got these giant, giant jaws. It could just snap your arm off if it wanted to. Huge bite force, and it will gingerly pick up its eggs, the eggs of its young, and kind of chew on the eggs very, very gently, very gently, so that they can try to hatch the eggs in case there's a baby inside of the egg that's having trouble getting out. And then they'll gently like put the baby out of it, their mouth onto the ground, and then they'll gather up all their babies and take them over to the river so that they'll, they can all go and be safe uh, under the watchful eyes of dad. And I thought that was really cool. And I can't remember the name of that species, but it is a species uh, endemic and unique to India. So I'm going to have to look that up later. All right. There, now my bridge can actually get where it's supposed to go. Jeez. All right, we'll go ahead and put like glass along here so people can see what's going on. This is a nice glass fence, actually. I really like it. And then, let's see, I want, there we go, this nice safari wall. In fact, we should put the safari wall down here instead of the glass fence. So there we go. And there we go and maybe a little bit further there okay and then we're gonna go ahead and i wonder how far i should make this fence go and we should try using like a really cool rock fence all right so this will be like the nile crocodile area over here i think this will probably be probably be big enough for them right here and we'll see if we can do kind of a multi-species exhibit but let me see if there's some sort of like cool rock fence that we can put down the middle to sort of divide up the territory that we have in here. Hmm. Because we've got a lot of fences. Do we have a cool rock fence of some kind? I know we've got a few, like kind of these guys. That's what I'm thinking about. Do we have just the right color? Um. I mean, I guess I could work with it because we just want to make the fence go like this so the animals can't get through. But it looks like the water still can. Uh, or I might just work with the safari rocks. I might just work with the safari rocks because honestly the safari rocks well no because we need it to be properly fenced in if it's not fenced in then the guest can't see animals inside of exhibits if they're not properly fenced in so let's go ahead and grab maybe this one the little medium one uh or do we want the really big one maybe the really big one and well i think this one will be okay too and then just like dun 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 dun, dun through the water there we go, and then maybe like the little big one right over here. Okay, there we go. And let's grab the safari wall and whoop right under our bridge so that people will be nice and safe and grab the glass fence. Oh, there we go. We're finally making some progress. No, my glass fence come back. Finally making some progress when it comes to making a nice Nile crocodile exhibit. All right, then we'll do like another little observing area over here. And grab the safari wall to finish enclosing it. I'm so excited! We're gonna have a new exhibit soon! The guests will be so happy to have this pathway to walk into oblivion. I'm sure that'll make them happy. But it does open up this entire area for adding in even more really awesome exhibits. So I'm pretty happy. Like the African wild dogs, which a lot of people were super excited about. So we'll definitely make an exhibit for them. Alright, let's do this. And then come down here. There we go, and I'll put in some binoculars somewhere at some point so that people can like look up close. Though really, if you visit crocodiles in Zeus, they don't really do a lot, I will admit that. Like the crocodiles just kind of lay there because they're, they they're, you know, basking. They're getting their thermoregulation. They're just kind of processing their food. They don't have to move a lot. And that's what a lot of the animal world, no, work. 
that's how a lot of the animal world is, is if you don't have to expend the energy, then don't because you need to keep hold of all of those precious calories so that you can survive. Because when those calories have to be fought for so viciously just so you can survive, then you're not going to waste them. All right, so let's see what our awesome Nile crocodiles need to eat. So we're going to put in some fish, lots of fish. So let's add some fish down here on this little island. I think that would be a good spot. We can put some over here too. But yeah, this is a huge exhibit for them. They should be very happy here. Maybe they'll be happy enough to have some babies. All right, and then we'll even put some artificial carcasses with meat because there are predators and you guys need to respect that. Guesties. So we'll put down some artificial carcasses here and there. And then uh, anything, they don't really use any of these. We could put a prey dummy kind of near the water's edge. That's kind of a cool idea. Some prey dummies by the water's edge to kind of act like like any little animals that might be like, oh, this looks yummy, like I want a nice drink of water. And then bam, crocodile. That's why if you, you know, you see penguins, the way that they'll kind of cluster at the edge of an iceberg before jumping off. I've seen the same behavior like in wildebeest and zebras when you see them on uh, like the river edge. And they really will kind of fight to see who gets pushed in first because they don't want to be the one to jump in and see if there's going to be something that eats them. All right, so let's see. There's the yellow ippy tree. We've got some of these pretty trees. Very nice trees. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, I like this tree. The little umbrella acacia tree. I always like this tree. It's a very nice tree. So we'll put these down here, provide some nice shade for the guests and the crocodiles. Can I put this over here? Not without putting it like right in the middle of the bridge. So, all right, there we go. Some nice acacia trees over here. We'll leave this area kind of open, but I'm going to cover this up. Then some more back here. So we have some shade. That thermal regulation is very important to provide shade areas and kind of basking areas for the different animals. Ooh, I like these. I like these little bush things. Nice. Okay, let's put this kind of like little cluster of it at the back here. Oh, look how quickly this is coming together. I love it. Oh, this is going to be so cool. And then kind of down by, oh, the river's edge like that. Oh, yeah. Look at that! Oh, that's so cool! Yes, that's perfect. All right, can I put some over here? I can. All right, and then let's turn. Kind of get a glimpse of what's going on over here. Anything, anything? I can put them over here at least. There we go. I think the, like, if there were kids visiting, they would get a kick out of seeing the little prey animals that would be nearby. I might have to move some of those bushes. Well, I don't know. I don't mind. That kind of looks like there's just stuff growing on the fence and I'm totally okay with that. A nice lot of greenery. Um, there's some small ones I can put over here. All right. Anything else they need? I'm hoping they'll figure out how to use the water that's in here and they won't freak out and act like they need water elsewhere. Um, the common broom. Ooh, this could be fun. Oh, the common broom has that weird shadow issue. That's right, that's why I don't use it very often. Um, let's see, some elephant grass maybe. Ooh, some African daisies. A few little piles of African daisies here and there. Uh, we might even try adding a terrestrial animal to kind of complement our aquatic Nile crocodiles in here. What do you guys think about that? So we might try that out. Some more daisies. Well, I'm going to put a little termite mound over there just because we can. Let's see, some black thorn bushes back here. Just up along the edges and maybe a little bit of red oat grass. Now what I really would love, now the common broom actually makes like a really good river edge plant is the thing. It just has this weird, that's okay. It's making it kind of like cool shadowy, I guess. Um, it just has that weird shadow that happens when you put it down. Uh, what about some nice rocks just to kind of go, yeah, kind of in the middle of the river there. Maybe a couple nice rocks. I guess there's not a large savanna rock. There's two a large savanna rock, isn't there? Don't I have one in the meerkat area? Oh, there's this. Oh, it's a meerkat sentry post. <laughs> Can I put a meerkat sentry post? It's like in here. No, it won't let me. Oh, that's just too cute. All right. So let me go ahead and put down a common broom. Kind of like it's taken root against where the rock is. Um. Really, I kind of just want some like little decorative pieces to go on the bottom of the riverbed. Even if it was just here, I'm just gonna put like a few little rocks 
There we go. That makes me feel better. Just like a few rocks, because a riverbed is not that clean. It's got a lot of debris. It's got a lot of stuff just kind of clustered in it. Oh, this is nice. All right. So let's come over and let our Nile crocodiles out and see what they think of their new home. Well, first off, if you have Zoo Tycoon 2, you're going to stay far away. And you put down a lot. Oh, the giraffe just gave the birth. It's a little baby. Where's your little baby? I want to see. There's some meerkats. Oh, she's going to give birth. Okay. Well, we might as well follow her for just a second, I guess. We're going to watch the miracle of birth with the giraffes again. Because it's... We're going to... We, okay, this area is getting a little crowded. Maybe I need to, like, scooch some of these animals out. All right, we might as well watch the giraffe give birth really quickly. Because we want to stay away. When you put down a whole bunch of stuff on the water in Zoo Tycoon 2, you... Oh, there's the baby! Hello, newbie! Hello! Yeah, you're cute. You want to stay away from the water after you put a whole bunch of things down on the water in Zoo Tycoon 2 because of the splash particle effects. Like, 50% of the time, even on my nice, nice, nice computer, they crash it. So you gotta, you gotta be careful. Alright, and by the way, these are the silliest looking Nile crocodiles I have ever seen. <laughs> so don't, don't judge too harshly. But there's our Nile crocodiles and they look ridiculous. Oh no, particle effects. Alright, they look pretty darn ridiculous, I'm gonna admit it. All right, there's meerkat 200 now. Oh my gosh, too many meerkats. So I have put in one male, three females, like I mentioned earlier, just to kind of show how the males tend to have their territory, their big territory that they'll sort of establish. And then they'll have females living within it of various ages and sizes that they will try to woo. All right, and then let's go ahead and I want to assign a zookeeper. Oh, I need a gate. So I'm going to put a zookeeper right here. Oh, and I have like nothing over here. <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty of room. We might try to put some other things in with the Nile crocodiles and just see if that goes over well or not. I need to put in a little gate really quickly. And there we go. And let's check on the crocodiles and see how they go. Oh, are we getting some fish? Are we already eating some fish? Oh, I think we're already eating some fish. Oh my goodness, look at him. Oh, you're so pretty. Look at you! So, just hanging out here on land. I like you. I like you a lot. You're pretty darn cool looking. Alright, where are the others? Oh, there we go, getting into the water. Alright, we're gonna wash the crocodiles. Oh, I like this exhibit. It's kind of simple. Okay, walking into the corner. I need to keep an eye on you. That's not good adjustment behavior for a new zoo resident. Um, let's see. Where are the others? Oh, look at him go! Somebody is already way over here, swimming along. Is there stuff to eat over here? No, you're just kind of chilling. You're just kind of chilling. Okay. This is going to be fun. So we will follow these guys around and kind of keep an eye on them. See how they adjust to their exhibit. And we might try... Oh, what's going on here? Are you, are you death rolling? Was this one death rolling? That was so cool. That'll be when they grab onto their prey and they do what's called the death rule. They'll kind of pull it into the water and they'll spin, 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 spin super fast to try to like tear something off. <gasps> Entertainment Donation Achievement Award! Congratulations! You raised more than 250,000 in animal donations. The face painting kiosk is now available for purchase in your zoo. All right, well, we will have to go ahead and add that in next time. That is super exciting. So we have got our Nile crocodiles, you guys. So we're probably going to be working a little bit more on kind of sprucing up the length of our new river, maybe adding in some multi-species exhibits here, some cranes, perhaps, things like that. Um, maybe some stray meerkats, since we have so many meerkats. And then, uh, yeah, like African wild dogs, lions. We've still got so many more creatures to add, and I need to put the little restaurant up here. And it's going to be fun because I love putting in the face painting kiosk and seeing how many of our guests start walking around with the face paint on. So that's going to be really fun too. All right, guys. Well, it looks like the crocodiles are settled in well, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.